we would like to show the relationship between a gradient vector and a curve. Now let's suppose I have a curve in two dimensions. It could be y equal f of x, it could be the equation of a circle, it could be anything that I can rewrite as g of x, y equals zero by putting everything on the same side of the equation. So this would become a level curve now for a three-dimensional curve. Now, if I consider at any point on the curve, I can have a position vector, let's call it r of t, and r of t would represent x of t, y of t, like before. Then if I said at any point on the curve, let's say we're looking at this point right here. Let's say this point is x naught, y naught. And therefore, this vector here would be r of t naught, where x of t naught is x naught, y of t naught is y naught. Then I can define my position vector using only one value. Now let's consider the tangent direction, which would be there, and then the orthogonal, the normal direction, we'll say is that guy. We want to show that this actually is in the direction of the gradient vector. And the way we'll do that is that we will restate this as g of x of t, y of t, equal to zero. Now when I take that quantity and I differentiate it with respect to t, now we can use the chain rule. I want to d dt both sides because right now there's only one independent variable and that would be t. So using the chain rule, that would become the partial of g with respect to x times dx dt plus the partial of g with respect to y times dy dt, and that would all equal to zero. But if I look at that quantity, that looks like the result of a dot product. Very specifically, partial of g with respect to x, partial of g with respect to y, dotted with dx dt, dy dt. This guy here is simply the gradient of g. This guy here is dr dt, or the, basically the velocity vector. So we've got here, this is dr dt, and therefore this is the gradient. And we have just proven that the gradient is orthogonal to the velocity, but the velocity is tangent to the curve. That makes the gradient orthogonal to the curve. It turns out the same thing is true in three dimensions if I used a level surface. So now we're going to define a very big concept next. We now want to introduce the concept of a Lagrange multiplier. We want to find the extreme of some function f of x, y, subject to the constraint that we'll, we were dealing with before. So I'm going to use the same picture. This curve represents g of x, y equals zero. And let's suppose that our function f of x, y actually has an extrema, either a maximum or a minimum, at the point x naught, y naught, which was this guy right here. I don't see f of x, y in this picture. I only see the constraint in this picture. So what we want to do is develop a relationship between f and g in order to solve the problem. So let's start by, we want to define a new function. Let's call it capital F of t, and we'll call capital F of t f of x of t, y of t. So I'm going to take x and y and replace them with x of t and y of t like we did with the position vector. Now, at this point here, we know that if f of x0, y0 is an extrema, a maximum or a minimum, then as a result, f prime of t would have to be zero because we know the derivative evaluated at that value I'll put at x naught y naught. But like before, we said x naught y naught were x and y evaluated at t naught. So we'll say at t equals t naught. So this is f prime of t naught specifically as opposed to f prime of t in general. So now let's break this down further. 
Now from this statement here, I want to differentiate both sides with respect to t since we're treating t as the only independent variable. So I would have f prime of t, and now I have to use the chain rule as we did before, and this would be the partial of f with respect to x times dx dt, plus the partial of f with respect to y times dy dt, and like before, we recognize that looks like a dot product. Very specifically, between these two quantities here, which we recognize as the gradient of f dotted with dr dt. And we did this before, but at this point, if I evaluate this now at t naught, so if I said f prime of t naught, which we know equals zero, that would equal the gradient evaluated at x naught y naught dotted with dr dt evaluated at t naught, and that quantity has to be zero, which proves that the gradient vector is orthogonal to the velocity vector again. But we already know that the gradient of g was orthogonal to this, and that result means that the gradient of f and the gradient of g are multiples. And the reason that's so important, if they are both orthogonal to the same thing at the same place, then they must be multiples of each other. And we say then that the gradient of f equals lambda, the Greek letter, times the gradient of g. Lambda is what we refer to as the Lagrange multiplier. So now we're going to use this to solve a maximization minimization problem. I would like to find the extrema of this function right here, f of x, y equals 4x squared plus y squared, subject to the constraint that every point must be on this line. Now, subject to the constraint means I need to create my g of x, y equal to 0. So that's a fairly simple notion. I just throw everything on the same side of the equality. So we'll make that 2x minus y minus 4. Now, we don't know if we're going to get a maximum, a minimum, or both, so we will have the ability to test that. But one of the nice things about a Lagrange multiplier is all extrema are absolute because they have to satisfy a constraint. Now, at this point here, we will set up this equation right here, and then we will solve. So the gradient of f would be 8x to y, the gradient of g would be 2, negative 1. And this gives us two very simple equations. It gives us that 8x equals 2 times lambda. It gives us that 2y equals negative 1, excuse me, um, negative 1 times lambda. Our goal is not to solve for lambda. Sometimes you can solve for lambda, and it will be really nice. Really what we want to do is use the fact that we know this relationship to set these equal to each other. So we notice in the second equation, if I multiply both sides by negative 2, I'll get negative 4y equals positive 2 lambda, and now the two equations are equal. So I would get that 8x equals negative 4y, or y equals negative 2x. Now I have the relationship between x and y. I will simply go back to the constraint and I will substitute this into the constraint. And when I do that, I will get negative 2x equals 2x minus 4, or negative 4x equals negative 4, which gives us x equals 1. Substituting here gives us y equals negative 2. So our extrema will occur at the ordered pair 1 comma negative 2. So next, f of, of 1 comma negative 2 if I plug that into the function here, will be 4 plus 4, or 8. Now, I have a value. It's an extrema, but I don't know if it's the largest or the smallest this function will ever achieve. So the test is really simple. I choose any other point that satisfies the constraint, substitute that point into this function. If the value is bigger than this, then this would be the minimum. 
If the value is smaller than this, then this would be the maximum. So let's take something simple. For example, I can see that the point 2 comma 0 is on the constraint. So we will test the point 2 comma 0. F of 2 comma 0 is 4 times 2 squared, or 16. 16 is greater than 8. That basically means that every other point on the constraint would have given me a value larger than 8. Therefore, 8 is the absolute minimum. And we have used Lagrange multipliers to solve this problem beautifully.